It's 2022 and phone cameras are better than ever. So good in fact that most people can't even tell the difference between a phone and a professional video camera. Yeah, I know, I know. So today, I'm giving you a complete breakdown on how to shoot a movie on your phone. So I was recently contacted by Disney about their new movie for Disney Plus, Hollywood Star Girl. First up, we've got Star Girl. Star Girl. Star Girl. Star Girl. A movie that takes place right here in beautiful Southern California and is all about getting out there and making stuff. You know, just doing the darn thing. That was a keeper. In fact, a major part of the movie is that Stargirl and her new friends, Evan and Terrell, make a movie right on their phones. Let's roll. So I thought, how cool would it be to show you how to use your phone to shoot a movie just like they do? So you want to be in our movie? <laughs> all right, let's do it. First, I recommend shooting in a third party app. You want to be able to control your exposure, mainly your shutter speed. 24 frames per second, one over 48th shutter speed, ISO as low as you can go. These are the settings used all across Hollywood. You'll also need one of these, an ND filter. It helps you control your shutter speed by limiting the amount of light that can hit your camera. Second, you need a gimbal. A major advantage of phones is how light they are. You can put them anywhere and fly them on a gimbal just like they do in motion pictures. Third, be conscious of what native lenses your phone has, and if you want, throw one of these over them. It's an anamorphic lens, the one that they actually use in Hollywood Stargirl, which replicates the look you see used all over Hollywood. It gives you that widescreen look. Fourth, sequences. All films are made up of them. We'll dive more into what these entail later, but for now, just know we'll have three scenes, and from each scene, we will have three to five or more shots to be used in our sequence, which in turn makes up our entire film. Lastly, big thank you to Disney. Honestly thought the email was spam when I got it, but it's real, so let's go. Welcome to Hollywood. Okay, so first things first, movies have three crucial aspects to them character, environment, and conflict and action. For character, you just need someone or multiple people in your film. In Hollywood Stargirl, Stargirl is the main character. Terrell, Evan, her mom, etc. are supporting characters. Environment basically comes down to where you are filming. Inside, outside, in farmland. In Hollywood Stargirl, they center around the city of Los Angeles and bouts between downtown LA and the beautiful surrounding areas. In terms of conflict and action, it just comes down to what is actually happening in your film. What is at stake? What is the problem or thing that your character or storyline is trying to solve? Again, in Hollywood Stargirl, Stargirl is moving all the time. So that's the first point of contention and conflict. And then the conflict becomes if they can make their movie or not, and ultimately when her mom is laid off. The additional thing here for conflict and action is that you need a resolution. You need the story to have an ending. Now, I'm not gonna give away any spoilers here, but in Hollywood Stargirl, there is a resolution to those conflicts. For the movie we're making, we have Natalie, our character. We are in Malibu, so location, check. And the conflict in action is her adventuring around looking for a place to picnic. Simple, I know, but simple can be a great place to start. And for the sake of demonstration, it's helpful. And go. Shooting a movie, sheesh, sounds overwhelming, right? Well, yes, but it's a lot simpler and easier to break down if you think of your movie in terms of scenes and sequences. Movies are made up of dozens of them, and that is how you move your story along. Thus far, all of these tips and lessons can be applied to any kind of film with any kind of camera. But what specific strengths do phones have when shooting, and what are their weaknesses? First, they have great dynamic range, they are very mobile, they are easy to use, and the speed at which you can set up a shoot is very high. In terms of what they struggle with, the main thing is depth of field. You'll notice in Hollywood Stargirl, there's a lot of bokeh, a lot of depth of field, which is the blurry part in your image. To solve for this issue, I recommend just not shooting a ton of super tight shots. But if your film calls for it and you do need that super tight shot, then I recommend using a third party app so you can more fine tune your focus. The phones also struggle with overexposing. Your phone is naturally gonna wanna brighten up the image and I always find myself, whether I'm shooting in the native app or a third party app, under exposing. Films are often dark, so you wanna make sure that you are replicating what you see in Hollywood, which is making sure that your shot is not overexposed. It's just gonna look more cinematic. So you've heard me mention sequences thus far, and what a sequence is, is three to eight shots or even more that make up your scene. It is the entire coverage of the scene you are shooting. Now, 
Sequences need shot diversity, which typically means you're using different focal lengths and different compositional techniques. The first place to start and easiest to comprehend is your wide, medium, and tight. Your wide is typically gonna have the whole person in frame, the medium usually cuts them off at the waist, and the tight is usually just their face or head. Another framing technique here that I love to use is implementing foreground elements. It just makes the bottom of your frame more interesting and helps direct the viewer's eye to what you want them to focus at. When I'm shooting an individual walking or some sort of follow cam, I love doing a mid shot where I'm either shooting waist up to make the character feel powerful and important or shooting eye level. Those are my two favorite shots. So there's waist level and then here's waist level looking up. Can I get you to walk? But a good composition can only get you so far because the next important thing is what is actually happening in your scene. What action is occurring because you need something to happen. You need something to transpire. Is your character walking, looking for something, laughing, crying, unsure of what to do? You get to decide. Point here is they just aren't standing there. You need to give your character some direction. Okay, cut. Now let's move in for a tight of her hand in the basket with her blanket. Okay, ready and go. And just as the light was starting to hit that golden hour period, look what we have here, a bunch of fog rolling in. And yes, the fog is actually beautiful, but it's a completely different vibe than we had set out to make. The lesson here is that you can't change the weather and you just got to roll with it. But notice here how the mood has completely changed. That sunny, beautiful light in this beautiful field now looks completely different with the sun completely blocked out. When you're going to make your film, have a good idea of what mood you are going for. The sun in bright, warm colors often just represents joy, while moody, overcast tones represent some sort of melancholy feeling. So the action thus far has been mainly our main character, Natalie, walking around and looking for a place to picnic. Now, my whole idea for the resolution was that she finds this beautiful overlook of the ocean as the sun sets, and that's where she decides, yes, I'll picnic here. Now the fog completely changed that. Fortunately, we stumbled across this bench, which the bench to me signifies the resolution. She finally has found a place to sit and be comfortable. That's a wrap. Now I know this was a lot of information, but go out, apply it, and practice. The best advice I can give to aspiring filmmakers is that find people who are close to you, your friends, your family, who are willing to go on these types of adventures and make stuff. It really takes a crew of people who are just willing to be a little bit adventurous. The whole mantra of Hollywood Stargirl has just been to put yourself out there and a big part of filmmaking is doing just that. 